So I've been the recipient of nature's bounty this weekend. I've got myself a pair of red-legged partridges, beautiful birds, and I've also got a venison carcass. Now what I haven't had in absolutely years is a really good game pie, so I think that's what I fancy making. I'm going to give it a little twist. First I'm going to smoke the partridges, but in order to do that, I need to make a fire and get rid of the feathers. So let's crack on. The last time I had anything to do with anything feathered was um, in the Lake District. So I was driving in the van and I was going over to the Lake District for, a, I think I was going either fishing or mushroom hunting. It was autumn time. And it was absolutely lashing it down. I mean, it was a really, really wet day. The rain was, it was torrential. Anyway, as I got to Hexham and left, on the, there was a big roundabout just as you head west of Hexham. Um, once I passed there, I saw this guy standing by the side of the road, um, thumbing for a lift. And I'm like, all right, you know, it's really, really bad. Well, that was a bad place to stop. And I thought, yeah, nobody's gonna stop from here. So anyway, I picked him up and I looked at him. And he was a pretty unusual looking guy. I mean, he was wearing flip-flops for a start. Um, anyway, I gave him a lift, he got in the van, and uh, we're chatting away. Uh, turns out he was heading, I think he was going to Carlisle to try and get a lift to go to Manchester or something like that. But basically he was like an, an old-fashioned gentleman of the highway, what you might call like a hobo or a tramp. Somebody that's sort of chosen that lifestyle. Um, and his stories were a good crack, man. He was like, he was definitely an unusual fellow. He smelled of cherry brandy, which... In this day and age, you, you don't get many people who smell cherry brandy. So that, that straight away, he was obviously a gentleman of culture, you could tell. Anyway, his stories were good crack, and he was talking a lot about the, the bounty of nature, like how, you know, how much the world can provide for you, and like how, how, what a wonderful and rich and abundant country that we lived in. So anyway, basically, just as he's finished saying that, there was a great big smack on the windscreen right where he was sitting. I mean, the both were nearly jumped up with skin. It turns out it was a pheasant had smashed into the windscreen and um, was down by the side of the road. And I'm like, Jesus, here you go. I'm like, <laughs> come on, let's, let, let's have it. And um, I basically I did a U-turn and I said, Larry, put your, put your money where your mouth is, jump out and get the bounty of nature and let's be on our way. So anyway, we did so, he, he, he jumped out and he was like, I think he was a bit taken aback. But anyway, I'm thinking, well, look, it's, it's a big fat pheasant and it actually was. Um, and I, I know it's fresh because it was also the hint. So let's not waste it. Let's not waste the bounty of nature. Um, and, I, and I took it and that night I made a stew from my thing. I had some bacon in the van and I made a pheasant and bacon stew. And honestly, it's one of the best meals I've ever had. It was so delicious, but also so satisfying as well. So I says to the guy, I'm like, here, look, that's that pheasant, that's your ticket. He says, what do you mean? I says, look, that, that's the universe has just basically paid for your passage for, you know, to Carlisle with me with this pheasant, so I made the most of it.
This wasn't entirely what I was anticipating when I started this. I was going to smoke them, so I was going to make a fire um, and just throw some damp wood on. But unfortunately, I didn't wait long enough. I didn't wait for the fire to die down long enough. Um, so when I put the damp wood on, it just went on fire. But adapt and overcome. Look what I've got here. These are starting to look pretty tasty. And I imagine that um, in a pie with some venison and stuff, this is going to be pretty good. They'll definitely have some smoky flavour from the fire. Now we've got all sorts of lovely roasted flavours as well. So we'll put those back in for just another minute or 30 seconds or so. Just enough to uh, glaze them up. I think that's um, perfect. Perfectly done.